Hello and welcome to this episode of Sharing the Eternal Word Still. My name is Father Silvanus Ame and I'm glad that you are able to uh, listen to this episode of the series Sharing the Eternal Word Still with Father Silvanus Ame. So in this episode, we are going to be looking at three types of people that God cannot help. Three types of people that God cannot help. But before we continue, I'd like to ask you to please follow me on my social media handles as you see displayed on your screen right now on YouTube, on Facebook, and also on Instagram. Please do just that click to follow me on uh, social media. And don't forget to also uh, like this video and also share it with your uh, contacts as well. Share it to your groups, share it to all of your friends. Okay, thank you very much. Now, so three types of people that God cannot help. I know this may come to you as uh, shocking, maybe. You wonder, how can God not be able to help somebody? But you see, these people I'm going to be talking about, people who are like this that I'm going to be talking about, who have any of the traits that I'm going to be sharing, they are, they have put themselves in a position where they cannot be helped. Not because God is powerless to help them, but because by their own dispositions, by their own mental attitudes, they, so to speak, block themselves up off from the help, the reach of God's help. Even human beings can help them. So if God can't help them, how much more human beings? They are in a very terrible situation, if you want to describe it that way. And in case you are one of such persons, this video will help you. If you know anybody who is like this, share this video with them so that they can learn and realize that there is something that they can do to move away from that spot where they presently are. Okay, so let's look at them. Three types of people that God cannot help. Number one are those who believe in faith without corresponding belief in works. Those who believe in faith without corresponding belief in works. And the big category, the larger category of these people will be Christians. Christians who have a twisted understanding of the Christian faith, who think that everything is to be done and achieved by prayer. For them, once they pray, God should be able to take care of everything. They see prayer as some, um, some, kind, of, um, some kind of magic, if you like, something that they just use to bypass the processes of nature. And uh, they will tell you that they have faith in God. And they believe that God can do all things for them, which is very true. God can do all things. But in their faith, they refuse to do the work that will give flesh to the faith. In James chapter 2, verse 26, the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. If you have faith, then let that faith be backed with works, be backed with actions. That's why St. James will say, show me your faith without works, and I, by my works, I will show you my faith. People like this, people who fall in this category, are those who believe that once they are praying about something, everything should fall in line for them. They are the kind of people who, during work hours, work days, business days, business time, rather than be where they are supposed to be working or they be where they are supposed to be doing business, they will be in a prayer house and praying and claiming and asking the man of God, whoever, if that's we can call him man of God, to prophesy. And they are pursuing by those prayer actions material progress without doing the works that will bring the progress. They are asking God to bless the work of their hands, but they are not working. In James chapter 3 verse 19, the, the Bible says, By the labor of your hands shall you eat. By the labor of your hands shall you eat. They want to eat, but they don't want to labor. In Isaiah chapter 65 verse 20, 21, the word of God says that you shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. This type of people, they want to eat the fruit, but they don't want to do the planting. They don't want to do the work that comes with the planting. An African adage says, if your hands are not soily during famine, 
Do not expect your mouth to be oily during harvest. People who are like this, they want their mouth oily during harvest, but they don't want to soil their hands. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, my dear listeners, my dear viewers, anybody who's listening to me right now, if you know anybody like this or you're like this, you need to change. You need to change. People who are in this category also are those who pray for healing but refuse medical treatment. Let me share a story with you. Some years ago, um, that should be around 2017, thereabout, a couple brought a child to the parish in the middle of the night. And then they came, they, came, they came calling, Father, Father, help us, help us. And I came out, what was it? They carried a child who was barely alive. And they said, Father, our child is sick, our child is dying. Pray for us, pray for our child. And I asked them, what are you doing here? You are supposed to be in the hospital, not here. They said, no, 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 Father, we believe that if you pray, God will heal him. I said, no. Prayer is good, yes, but the prayer, the answer to your prayer is in the hospital. You should have taken this child to the hospital and then come and ask that I go to pray with him. Immediately I went into the house, got my khaki and told them, oh yeah, let us go. We entered the car and I drove as fast as I could to the nearest hospital that was closest to the parish. By the time we got there, the child entered that hospital, DOA, dead on arrival. And then they were crying. And the doctor said, if that child had come in earlier, maybe the child would have survived maybe so rather than taking this child to the hospital where they will get help the answer to their prayer they were running to church and it was a very wrong thing to do as if they were taking that child to the church and pray to the hospital and praying at the same time god will still do what he will do but they made the wrong move and there are many people who are like that they need a surgery and they will say no my god has promised that he will take sickness from the midst of us so no surgery will be done a woman is dying and she needs a cs and either the woman or the husband or the family are saying no my wife will deliver like the hebrew women i will deliver like the hebrew women how did the hebrew women deliver are you a hebrew woman but the answer to that complex situation is a yes. God has blessed us with the gift of medical science. Some people pray for healing, but they refuse, they reject that answer of medical science that God has given. So God cannot help such people because they have refused help. They have put themselves in a place where they cannot be helped. There are many people who are like this. We can go on and on and give many examples. People who believe in faith, without a corresponding belief in works. Such people cannot be helped by you or by anyone. They can also not be helped by God. Not because there is no one who is willing to help them, not because God cannot help them, but because they have made themselves inaccessible to the help that is offered them. The second category that we look at, the second category of people, the second type of people that God cannot help are those who do not believe in their own abilities. Those who do not believe in their own abilities. You see, every one of us have been given a gift by God. We have potentials, we have talents, we have bundles of possibilities. But there are some people who have a very low estimation of themselves, who have a very poor view of themselves. They lack confidence. They have almost like 0% confidence in themselves. They do not trust that they are able to do anything. They have what I call the grasshopper mentality. They see themselves as so small. And everything that is a challenge, so to speak, they see as very large, as, as giant, as very monumental. Such people cannot be helped until they move themselves from that place to where they begin to see that they have strength, they have talent, they have abilities, and they can, do, they can do great things. If you read Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to 30, it tells the parable of the talents that Jesus told. And the master of the house was traveling and gave his servants talents, each according to his ability. 
it is very important to underline that each according to his ability and one of them who did not believe that he was able to do anything that is capable of doing anything took what the master gave him and went and buried it that's what some people do today they bury their talents they bury their gifts they bury their potentials they bury their capacities and then when the master came back and asked them come and give an account of what i gave you there was nothing he could present no account to render the consequence the master said bind him hand and foot and throw him out this is exactly what happens when people do not believe in their own abilities they are thrown out where things are happening they will not be there they cannot be there they are cast out because of their own lack of belief in themselves because of their own lack of trust in their abilities because of their own lack of faith in what god is able to do through them there is something that god has put in you there is something that god has planted in you there is an ability a capacity a potential a talent that god has given to you and you need to put it to use unless you do that you will continue seeing yourself at the background you will continue seeing yourself by the sidelines where your mates are progressing you will not be progressing with them where your mates are achieving great things you will be by the sideline and then one of the consequences of this is that some people some of these people get depressed because they do not believe that they can do anything and they also do not see anything meaningful happening around them such people cannot be helped neither by man nor by god unless unless they resolve to move away from that position of lack of self confidence that is only when god can help them god has given to us the capacity to do great things if you read also numbers chapter 13 beginning from verse 1 to 13 moses sent out spies to go and look at the land of canaan and they went and they came back 40 of them 38 said no we cannot take that land only two joshua and caleb said let us go we can defeat those people we can conquer the land 38 said no we cannot that in fact we saw giants there and we looked like grasshopper in their in in in, in their midst they carried the grasshopper mentality and they spread it among the people and as a consequence god sent the people back into the desert and they kept wandering for many more years and god said none of you none of you the age of 20 shall enter 20 and above shall enter into the promised land they all died in the desert because they started willing ah we are finished we are doomed moses why did you bring us out of egypt to come and die in this place but God was the one who said to them, go, go and conquer this land. I am with you. But they did not believe in God and they did not believe in themselves. When we do not believe in our abilities, we are also expressing lack of faith in God. Because God is the one who has given us those abilities. It is important, therefore, to always, always, always trust God and trust in what he can do with us. And through us and then the third group the third type of people that God cannot help are those who procrastinate over everything those who procrastinate over everything there's nothing that they are ready to do now everything is later tomorrow next week next month okay I will I will do it I will do it it is hard to hear them say I have done it Procrastinators are killers of time. Procrastinators are killers of opportunities. Procrastinators are those who see things pass them by. The very things that they may be looking for, the very things that they may be praying for, will pass them by. But they are too lazy to stand up and get it. They will say later. Akwe lokochi. And when eventually they want to get up and do anything it is too late that time balokachi balokachi james chapter 4 verse 17 the bible says whoever knows the right thing to do whoever knows what needs to be done and does not do it for him it is sin procrastinators know what they are supposed to do but they will not do it they will say later and oftentimes 
they never get it done. So, we can say by implication that they are constantly living in sin because they know what to do, but they don't do it. And the Bible says, for whoever knows the right thing to do, whoever knows what to be done and does not do it, to him it is accounted as sin. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4, the word of God says that he who observes the wind will not sow. He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. This is exactly what procrastinators do. They look for an excuse not to do what needs to be done. Ah, the wind is blowing, the wind is blowing. Let me wait. After the wind, I can go and plant the seed. And even if they manage to plant the seed, time to reap the harvest, they will say, ah, the cloud is gathering, it will rain. Let me wait. After the rain, but it may eventually not rain. And every time, oh, there is going to be rain. And they stay and keep procrastinating until the crops will die. So scripture says in that text of Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 4, that anybody who continues to observe the wind will not sow. And the one who continues to pay attention, who continues to regard the clouds will not reap. Procrastinators are difficult to be helped. Procrastinators cannot be helped by man. Procrastinators cannot be helped by God. Because the more you push them, the more they find reasons not to get up. The more they find reasons not to move. They will have 3,000 excuses not to do one thing. But of course, there is a limit to the time that is available to us. We do not have all of the time. Now is the time that we have. That's why scripture says today, today is the acceptable day. Today, now is the day of salvation. So, my dear listeners, my dear viewers, as you listen to me in this episode of Still Sharing the Eternal Word, ask yourself, does any one of these affect me? Am I in any one of these three categories? If yes, what do you need to do? You need to get up, wake up, resolve Decide, take action to move away from that place. Be very intentional about this. Be very intentional about this. Look at what needs to be done and do it. Because as long as you continue to carry any of these traits of believing in faith without corresponding belief in works, of failing to believe in your abilities, of always procrastinating any one of these or a combination of more to all of them, then you will never have a fulfilled life. Your life will always have one setback, one drawback, one question mark. But that is not what God wants for you. God wants you to be a champion. God wants you to rise. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to increase. God wants you to blossom. God wants you to be at your best. To do this, to be at your best, you must kill these traits. You must consciously, intentionally move away from them. This is the only time when you can realize your full potential in life. I hope that you have learned something from this video. And please, like I said, do well to share. So that somebody else too will learn. So that somebody else too will be helped. So that somebody else will be challenged to live a better life. And don't forget, please follow me on my social media handles. As you see displayed on your screen right now. And may the Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. To the word of God. I'll cling to you. Satan whispers lies, God's truth will make me wise, I'll cling to the word.